Happy Halloween, it's finally here, October 31st, the best night of the year for horror fans. As you can see, I am dressed up in my costume, which is Pickle. I'm missing the rest of this family costume, which is Cheese, my wife on the side, and my daughter who will be the Hungry Hungry Caterpillar. And that is our family costume, but as of right now, I am just solo Pickle. Now, it is finally time to rank one of the best horror movie franchises to ever exist, in my opinion, the Halloween franchise. But first, before we get into that, I want you to tell me what your Halloween plans are down in the comments. I want to know what everyone's doing. Do you get trick-or-treaters? Do you celebrate Halloween? Is it a big thing where you live? Just let me know what you're going to do. I'm curious. Unfortunately, where I live, we don't really get trick-or-treaters. I wish we did. I so wish we had trick-or-treaters, but I am excited. This year, my daughter is 10 months old, so she can't really like trick-or-treat and get candy, but this will be the first time in a long time. I am going to be going out trick-or-treating on behalf of my daughter just for fun. We wanted to go out. I want to take her out, show off our family costumes, and so we're going to go downtown and probably also to do some houses and just do a little trick-or-treating and it'll be it's crazy like as a kid when you trick-or-treat and then you get to that age where you can't anymore and you know you do other things but then now I have a child and I get to go back out and do it again I'm honestly so interested to see what it's going to be like like how much trick-or-treating has changed because I I know it's just so different like from when I was a kid you know, now people can like congest into like one neighborhood and doors like, like almost stay open and like form a line and lots of kids just go to like one neighborhood and trick or treat. It's not the same as when I was a kid. So I'm really interested to do that. I'm very excited, though, and hopefully we have a lot of fun. That being said, let's get into ranking this franchise. Since it's Halloween and I'm ranking the Halloween franchise, I'm going to be drinking my Halloween themed coffee, Perk Coffee. I always like to pick up Halloween themed coffees every year. This one is from the company Perk and they've got this cool like specialized box and you can't really see it that well, but it says Halloween blend sweeter than candy and smoother than a ghost tiny. It's pretty good. And also side note, since I am reviewing the Halloween franchise, I think this is an interesting tidbit. You may or may not care about it or since I'm ranking, I guess I should say not reviewing. I literally drink my coffee like this with my fingers through the thing like this, I drink it like this since I saw Halloween H2O. Because of Josh Hartnett in Halloween H2O, this is how he sits in the kitchen when he's talking to his mom, Lori Strode, or what, what the heck is her name in Halloween H2O? Gosh, I am blanking on her name in Halloween H2O. But literally since he sits in the kitchen and he drinks his coffee like this, that is the reason for decades of my life I have drank my coffee like this. I really hope the sound is coming through and this just like is not just totally ruffling and making tons of noise. If it is, I apologize. But we are going to rank the Halloween franchise from worst to best. 13 films to talk about today. And, you know, the Halloween franchise, as I mentioned, genuinely is one of the best franchises, horror franchises to ever exist, in my opinion. So this is a wild thing, but genuinely, there's only one movie in the entire franchise that I don't really like. I like all of them. Now, to varying degrees and for different reasons, some, of course, are going to be more guilty pleasures. Some are just because Michael Myers is in them. Some are because Josh Hartnett's in them. Whatever it may be, I love really all of them for different reasons, except for one of them, which is going to be my last pick, of course, in this ranking. But just going in, knowing that, this is one of my favorite franchises. I've seen all the films so many times and it's just like, you can't really lose for me. They're just, they all different hit different beats for sure. And of course, I'm not going to say that they're all the best films. They're not all genuinely good films, but I love them all. And I have a personal attachment to this franchise, similar to the Scream franchise. These are my two top ones. So that being said, let's get right into it with number 13. Coming right in at the bottom of the list, the only movie in the entire Halloween franchise that I don't really like, the 2007 remake 
from Rob Zombie. Yep, that's the bottom of the list for me. I'm not going to get into all of the numerous reasons this movie sucks as a remake, but it just absolutely destroys everything that made the original so good. It's just not a pleasure to watch. It's not fun to watch. It takes forever to get into it. When you get into the stuff that's basically just a copy and paste of the original, but not done as well, it just takes so long to get there. There's so much backstory. The acting sucks. The dialogue sucks. There are some decent variations of the kills, but just done in a Rob Zombie form. There's a couple cool cinematography moments in here. I mean, honestly, there's really not much to say that I enjoy about this film. I really don't like this movie. Again, once you get to like the last 30 minutes, there's some tolerable moments, but there's just so many things that this film does so wrong. It feels like it copied the movie, the original, but didn't understand at all. And I know people have talked about this movie to death and there's fans of it. There's people who hate it, but it just doesn't know what it is. It's trying to be the original, but also be Rob Zombie. And it just has no identity and it does everything so piss poor. But one of the most like egregious things that always glaringly sticks out to me that I think about when this film, when I think about watching this movie is the original moment in this film when the score hits is when little baby Michael Myers is coming with a tree branch to kill that kid and they decide to play the whole, this iconic John Carpenter score the Halloween score in the middle of the broad daylight in the, when this little kid has got a, like a branch and he's going to beat, it just absolutely ruins the score. The worst timing, the musical moments just are supposed to accentuate the evil of Michael Myers. And it just completely did not understand how to use this amazing score. Again, so many things wrong with this film. I don't really going to want to get into all of the details of the reasons I don't like this film, but that this is the fact that it didn't, you know, Rob Zombie didn't even know how to use this amazing score properly shows that he didn't fully understand the film or, or in his defense, didn't want to do the same things. In other words, good that uh, John Carpenter did with the original, but it just fails in so many levels. But the, again, it ultimately just fails as a movie, not even as a remake. It fails as a movie because it's just boring if you showed any other horror film with this much backstory, trying to get into the film and like the background of some psycho killer kid, it wouldn't work on any level. Like it doesn't have to be a remake for it to not work as a film. Now coming in at number 12 on this list is gonna be the 2002 Halloween film, Halloween Resurrection. Now you've got Rick Rosenthal returning to direct here after Directing Halloween 2, which is not a perfect sequel, but far superior than Halloween Resurrection. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of this, I genuinely still really enjoy this film for many different reasons, but it's definitely not a good Halloween sequel or a good film. I'm going to try not to talk too much about these films, otherwise this video is going to be so long, but Halloween Resurrection course does the thing it should not do which is came in killing off Laurie Strode in the very beginning as well as upending the great ending that we got with Halloween H2O with some although I do think it is creative and pretty genius to be honest with you it's a little bit of a cop out of an ending with the uh, Michael Myers of all people got scared and put the mask on somebody else and so then Laurie Strode killed some paramedic at the end of Halloween H2O. Genius way, honestly, we've got to give it credit. That is a genius way to write Michael Myers back into the franchise. However, it doesn't really make any sense. And, you know, it's just this movie has all kinds of flaws. You've got an insane performance here from Busta Rhymes and, uh, you know, doing some karate mixed martial arts with Michael Myers. But I think the film at this, the thing that Halloween Resurrection does really well is trying to be more modern. And I like that it's very aware that it's trying to be more modern with its like found footage cam thing, trying to stick with the, you know, reality TV show type stuff and 
trying to show a different story. Definitely, this is the most different story we have in the Halloween franchise. And I kind of like the story, honestly. I like this idea of going back into the Myers house and trying to create this reality TV show with some fake scares and Michael Myers shows up. You know, I think the performance from Michael Myers, whoever plays him in here, I should know, I could look it up, but I don't at this moment. I think actually it does pretty well. The mask in here also is pretty decent. It's one of the better masks in the franchise. There's also some cool kills in here, some creative different things going on in the Myers house and under the Myers house. This one for sure is like, if you're not a huge fan of the franchise, I absolutely can see why people hate this film. But being just a, a soft spot for Michael Myers and seeing the mask actually honestly look a little better in this movie than we've seen in some other movies, I like this one genuinely feels more fun. It definitely has, again, that self-aware, somewhat self-aware tone to it. It kind of knows what it's trying to do. And this one is just one that I put on when I understand exactly what I'm getting to. And I want to have a more Halloween H2O type of tone, like a modern teen, teen slasher tone to it with a more modern feel, but I'm not watching Halloween H2O. It's one is just, a fun one to put on and enjoy, although it definitely has many faults. All right, coming in at number 11 on this list is going to be the next one from Rob Zombie, and that is the 2009 sequel to his remake, Halloween 2 or H2, however you want to refer to it. And I should say, because there are different versions, I much prefer the theatrical version of this film. It's the unrated version is where... Michael talks and there's way more of him and the whole like horse crap and all that nonsense, which I hate all that stuff. I hate all of the like additions that Rob Zombie writes in here. However, as I have mentioned in the beginning of this list, the only one in this fran only film in this franchise that I don't like, at least to an extent, is the Rob Zombie remake. I do enjoy H2 for many different reasons. Now, as I mentioned, the story elements here, the stuff that he writes are garbage, is all garbage for the most part, but I think there are some beautiful, beautiful shots in this one. I love some of the brutality and some of the cinematography. I love the Michael Myers in the rain, in the field. I love the poster for this film. I just, there's a lot more in this movie that felt like Rob Zombie was not trying to mimic John Carpenter, but was trying to make it his own. And I know there's a lot of backstory going on where he didn't want to make this movie and it was a big F you to all of the people behind the scenes and the studios, whatever. But to me, it felt like this was Rob Zombie unleashed, not afraid to kind of do what he wanted to do, but still kind of trying to tell a Halloween story and still trying to give Michael Myers life in a way. And so there's a lot of like, mostly I'm going to talk about the cinematography, but the music in here also, I do think is much better than the remake. Again, felt more like it had identity to it. There's just a lot more to grasp onto here. I think there are, as I said, some really cool kills and just some really, really cool, interesting choices in this film. Again, story moments, the ending sucks. I do like what we see with Laurie Strode's character in here in the aftermath of what's happening. I like a little bit more of what's going on with Loomis and the book and stuff like that that's going on in here. It's not great, but I like it more than just this basic stupid version that we got in the remake of what he thought Loomis should be like from the original, but in a more modern film. So again, not a perfect movie, but I actually would urge you that if you haven't seen this one in a while, maybe get another chance and pay attention to more of the creative stylistic choices around here. And you're going to see that a lot in this list. I'm going to talk about the different creative choices that go into a lot of these films because Halloween franchise in particular, I think we have a lot of talented directors in this franchise that are making the styles their own, which is very unique to other franchises because Rob Zombie is doing his own style, but like he's kind of competent in certain aspects. And you're gonna see that a lot in this franchise. They don't all fit together, but you've kind of got competent directors giving them their own style and taste, which I really appreciate in this. All right, coming in at number 10 on this list is the 1989 sequel, Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. Now, 
This is an ever-changing list like most of my lists. My rankings will go up and down, up and down, up and down. And as of literally before making this video, I had Halloween 5 a bit higher. And the only reason that I dropped it down to 10, and again, I still enjoy this film. None of these at this point in time in this list are any films I don't enjoy for the most part. I don't think Halloween 5 is as good of a sequel for sure. This one to me feels the most incompetently made, which is why it ranks a little lower on the list. It just is a little bit of a slog to get through. It's a little bit more just plain boring to me to watch as I revisit it. Now there are interesting choices here that I still do enjoy. And the mask, I'm not even talking about the mask, but it's maybe better than four. No, it's not. It's not better than four. No, it's worse than four. Yeah, it, I think I like four better. But there's just so much wrong with this movie, the Myers house, but I'm not even getting into all of those details. You know, the music that plays when the, when the cops show up, the clown music, there's so many different pieces that don't work in this film. But that being said, ultimately, the reason that this is at number 10 is simply because it's just a little bit more boring. Other than that, I do enjoy some of the, I let the ending here with them at the barn uh, and having like the Halloween party. I like some of the, sc the scares there. And I do like this continuing story of Jamie Lloyd's character. And I don't understand why she's deaf. And it, it's a little bit annoying. It grates on me a little bit every time I watch it. But I do like the continuation of the story. I don't like the cop out from the ending of four. I hate that they did that. And they just kind of were like, oh, she just, you know, has this connection to Michael Myers and she went crazy and tried to kill her stepmom, but didn't succeed after you have that like ballsy ending in four. And then they just kind of like cop out. Don't like that. But again, lots of things to harp on here. But ultimately, I do still enjoy Halloween five. It still feels more like a Halloween movie than some of the other films. And it's like. This, this film franchise is so interesting because it's like Halloween 1 and 2 feel pretty similar. Halloween 3 feels different. Halloween 4 and 5 kind of feel similar. 6 is like kind of a divergent. And then you've got like H2 and Resurrection. Again, varying qualities, but they feel more similar in their time frame. And you've got the remake and the sequel, and you've got this other trilogy. So they all kind of like feel different and kind of go together. So this one is the most in that like when you're in the mood for Halloween four, five and six and that kind of like resurgence or revamp, if that makes any sense, this scratches that itch a little bit. All right, coming in number nine on this list is going to be the most recent film in this franchise and that is Halloween ends. Now, I know again, just like many of the films on this list, very divisive and I, I'm not gonna try to review the film and go into every aspect that I like and don't like. Yes, this film has tons of issues. This whole trilogy, this modern, more recent trilogy has tons of issues. But being a huge fan of Michael Myers, and as I've kind of mentioned on my channel before, being a huge fan of the atmosphere, the tone, the lighting, and all of the details that go into the set designs that are in this trilogy, that's a big thing for me. I like a Halloween film to feel like it's Halloween time. So I like the supermarkets to have decorations. I like the house to have decorations. I like to see kids trick or treating. I like to see fall leaves. So when you give me that, you give me lighting, you give me kills, you give me a John Carpenter score. I know if you're a fan of the Halloween franchise, you gotta give Halloween ends. At least it's got a John Carpenter score. It's got Christopher Nelson doing makeup effects. It's got some cool vibes, some cool tone. Again, I understand lots of issues, you know, but it, it didn't hold back with its ends title. Now, I didn't love this coming out of theaters. I did enjoy it, I think, more than some people. I'm still not 100. I'm still like literally every time I watch it, I'm kind of like, eh, torn in multiple directions because I, I do, again, I have lots of issues with it. But it's grown on me, and I can see this one even moving up, possibly, or down. It just depends how the years go. When I put this on, I am looking for that Halloween vibe at vibe atmosphere. I like the opening of this film. I like the suspense is built in the way it's shot. Babysitting this kid in this huge mansion, Halloween night. 
I love the lighting. I love, again, I love the score. There's a lot of things here I really, really enjoy. Hate Laurie Strode character in this film for the most part. You know, I, I hate a lot of what the character work that's done in here. You know, it doesn't bother me so much that we don't get Michael Myers until the end of it. It just kind of bothers me more how and when. There's lots of, again, lots of issues. I'm not trying to get into every issue, but there's so much to enjoy here. The set design is really, really nice. I love the houses. I love a lot of the detail work that's put in here. And so when I put this on, this has just got that vibe. It's got a certain tone to it. And I really enjoy that. So for me, as the viewer, something that I like to go into a film, I like to enjoy that. I like to soak up all of that like Halloween vibes, like just the Halloween time vibes. I like a well shot, well lit film with a good John Carpenter score. So when you give me that, that's what I expect going into this. And story wise, I like pieces of also Christopher Nelson effects, like I said. Uh, so story wise, you know, I just kind of have to ignore some things. But as mentioned, it's kind of grown on me more. So who knows where this will be in a couple of years. All right, coming in at number eight on my ranking is going to be the 1995 sequel. Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. And I'm not going to specify a cut here. I know a lot of people enjoy the producer's cut more. And honestly, I don't know which one I like more. The, I have flaws. With, there's flaws in both cuts. And there's things I like more in both cuts. So, and I've also seen, when I've watched them, you know, I watched like the crappier Blu-ray of one cut. Then I bought the, I think I bought the, did the producer's come out? cut come out on DVD first or Blu-ray first? I don't remember. So I watched the first version when the producer's cut came out. Then, you know, you get the much more updated 4Ks from Scream Factory. And so I'm not, honestly not sure which one I like the most, but Halloween 6, again, lots of flaws in terms of storytelling. I'm not a big fan of the Thorn trilogy or where things go in this, but I when you get that like four, five, and six, they all kind of feel cohesive and this kind of caps them off i do really enjoy atmosphere tone this one's got leaves it's got lots of nice orange colors halloween decorations it's got some cool kills some cool moments pieces here and there and i like the opening scene it's kind of stupid but i like the opening uh, of jamie's character being chased through the rain and bus station i like paul rudd in this i mean he's bad in it but also really good at the same time. And I'm sure if you're a fan of this film, you understand exactly what I mean. There's a lot of elements that I just really enjoy in this movie. This one for me, up until the trilogy, the new trilogy, this one for me had some of the best Halloween atmosphere besides like the original. And so that for me, you're going to see again and again and again, I'm going to say it over and over is a huge thing. I just, it connects to my childhood, I guess, connects to nostalgia and just the time of year when you can get that Halloween atmosphere and get it right. And just show me the Halloween decorations and the leaves. I love it. I'll eat it up. So this one for me for years was the one I'd put on when I was carving pumpkins or decorating, put on the background. And honestly, I feel like I've only sat down and actually watched this, like paid attention all the way through, maybe like twice because the rest of the time I'm putting this on as background. It's just one that I enjoy to particularly put on in the background a lot. And so for me, that's why it's number eight, because I really do enjoy a lot of aspects of it, but it's not necessarily what I consider to be one of the best in the franchise. As I said, again and again and again, I do enjoy almost all of these films, so I still really enjoy it. So number eight is still a pretty high spot. All right, coming in at number seven on the list is going to be the movie that brought Michael Myers back to us all, the 1988 film Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. Now this one, I can see a strong argument for being higher on the list for some people, for sure. You could definitely convince me that it deserves to be higher. For me, this one just hits right here in the list because I don't know, it's not the one that I put on more, at least at the moment. Now, I will say, in my opinion, I actually think that Halloween 4 is one of the strongest sequels, especially because I just watched it again the other night, and it holds up way better than I think that I remember. Every time I watch it now, every year, especially with the new 4K, 
this movie holds up a lot better than I remember. When I was younger, I think I just, I saw the mask and I couldn't look past the mask. As I've gotten older, I've been able to look past, I almost like see Michael Myers as just like a headless figure and I look past the mask. I know the masks, the masks in four and five and six have some fans and I know that people have grown to love them or appreciate them. I still don't think they're very good. I just, they, they absolutely don't do the same thing that the first film does, just striking fear into the heart of the audience. And it just doesn't do that. The first time you see it in this film, it just doesn't work. It's, you know, a joke when he grabs the mask out of off of the shelf in the convenience store or whatever. It's like hilarious almost. But again, that being said, as years have gone on, I've gone to appreciate this film more. I believe that Halloween 4 does the best storytelling in terms of bringing us a cohesive story for Halloween night in this town. And it does the best since the first, I think, of introducing Michael Myers as this fearful idea and this shadow, this like, you know, concept rather than just being like Michael Myers is Michael Myers in like some of the sequels, you know, not, again, Michael Myers is always great to see in a movie, but I think this one really nails the idea of him as this concept more than some of the other sequels do. I also think this one builds suspense the best as one of the other, as one of the sequels, I guess what I'm trying to say, what kind of sentence that is, I don't know. It builds suspense better than some of the other sequels. In my opinion, I do also think that this film really nails what the first film did really well. And this, and Halloween two does really well, or some of the sequels do pretty well. And it's one of my favorite aspects of the Halloween franchise and it's that core concept of this town understanding that there's this like thing this evil presence in this town and sort of shutting down the town getting the trick-or-treaters off the streets and like being afraid of this presence this idea of something that could be anywhere it's lurking in the darkness and the town is trying to band together and they don't know where he is, what's happening, who he's after. You know, the, this one does that. I think the best since the first one and the first one doesn't really have the town aspect, but you've got that like Loomis, you know, getting the, uh, getting the police on board of this like idea of something evil lurking in the town and trying to warn them and sort of like, getting trick-or-treaters to go in and hide away. And so besides the 2018 film, I think this one does it the best, really, of showing that just that concept of this evil lurking in the town and it could be anywhere. And th that's the concept that gave me nightmares as a kid. That's what, you know, the first film does so well and I don't, and I think is lacking in a lot of the sequels. So while a lot of them have different things to grasp onto, this is the one that I go to when I want that. All right, coming in number six on this list is going to be one I consider a fantastic film. I love this movie. I think it's great. So being at number six does not mean anything because I love this movie. I think it is just a fantastic Halloween film. And that is the third film in the franchise, the one without Michael Myers, that's Halloween 3. Now, I love the score for this movie. I love the story. I love the idea of the concept of this Halloween franchise that could have continued, you know, the what would be, what could have been a, a reoccurring yearly thing of different tales on Halloween. Love it. I love the idea. This one has its own vibe that I think really separates it from the rest of the Halloween franchise. It's very competently directed by Tom Lee Wallace. I love the masks. I love the lore. Again, score, the small town. I love so much about this movie. The only reason it's at number six, I think, is just because when I'm at, you know, celebrating in October and I'm watching a Halloween film, I tend to put on a Michael Myers film more. Not because I think it's necessarily a better film. It's just I generally like to spend time with Michael Myers and trick-or-treaters. And so I will, for the most part, 
put on one of the first five that are on this list because it's got more of the Halloween decorations feel, the more of the kills, more of the Michael Myers and like the lighting, the cinematography, things like that that I might gravitate towards to rewatch. Not because I think that they're better films. So that being said, number six, Halloween three. I love this movie. I've already said a whole bunch about what I love this love about this film. There's honestly not much that I don't like about this movie. Uh, the only thing I don't think it does nearly as well as some of the other films is maybe capturing the fall atmosphere. It doesn't do that as well, but man, the score, I just, I love this. I love so much about this movie. And it just, again, this one really stands on its own as being so iconic. Like there's so many, there's 12 other films in this franchise and this is the one on its own that created masks and enough of a, a story to, you know, spawn what could have been numerous sequels and create its own fan base based off just this one film. And I just think that, you know, I don't, again, I'm just going to say the same thing over and over again, but I love Halloween three. There's just so much that I love about it and it feels very unique on its own. I understand why it was divisive at the time it came out and doesn't have Michael Myers in it, whatever, et cetera, et cetera. I get it. But if you don't like Halloween three and you like, John Carpenter films, and I'm aware this is not a John Carpenter film, but it feels the most like a John Carpenter film to me, besides the original. I think maybe this is a hot take. Halloween three feels more like a John Carpenter film than Halloween two does. I think it definitely has more of his signature presence in there. Again, I know he didn't direct it, but I feel like it's the most John Carpenter besides the first one. And so that's part of why I think I love it so much. So if you're not a Halloween three fan, just, I don't know, remove the Michael Myers, not being there aspect, give it another chance. If for some reason you still haven't hopped on board the Halloween three fan base. All right, coming in number five on this list. And this is where I'm going to piss some people off, but it is the second David or David Gordon green film in the new trilogy, Halloween Kills. And I want to really make this clear. When I'm ranking this list, when I'm talking about the Halloween films, I am not talking about substance, quality, storytelling. I'm talking about the films I gravitate towards and I like to watch the most frequently and enjoy the most in this franchise. Halloween Kills is an absolute disaster of a film in terms of writing, in terms of dialogue, in terms of character development, in terms of a sequel. There's so much wrong with this movie. I will be the first to hop on board that train and admit this film is completely flawed. But me, target audience, come October, when I want to watch a glossy, polished, Halloween film when I want Michael Myers that looks dope, a super cool mask, awesome flashback sequence, great kills, and set design. I don't feel like I hear people talk about this enough. Maybe people don't care or it doesn't stand out as much to them. I love the set design in Halloween Kills. I love the Myers house. I love what it was turned into. I love Big John, Little John, their characters, that whole sequence. I love it. I love the trick-or-treaters coming up to their house and them scaring them with this story. The, I just, the inside of the Myers house, what they did with it, I love the way it's lit. I love a lot of the kills, a lot of the gore, a lot of what Christopher Nelson did here. I love the park sequence with the masks and like, I there's so much dripping with just Halloween detail that I absolutely love. I love the way the bar stuff is lit. I love a lot of the just the street sequences, the, the fall atmosphere, the trick or treating. There's so much to appreciate. Also, the John Carpenter score. Can we talk about? Come on, the John Carpenter score is so good in all three of the films. I love the score in Halloween Kills. I think maybe the most, I don't know, probably the 2018 film, but there's so much to be enjoyed in this film. And I get it. I get it. The film's a mess. I did not enjoy it when I first saw it in theaters. I had so many issues with it. 
once I acknowledge that there were issues with it, I'm able to go in and enjoy the things that I really like about this film and ignore some of the bad things. Every time I watch it, I think what could have been, what could have been, what could have been. It's so infuriating because so many things could have been so much better. This could have been one of the best Halloween sequels. Who knows who to, who's to blame? David Gordon Green, the writers, the four different writers coming together. The fact that we have a comedian writing a script for a Halloween Kills sequel or a Halloween sequel. You know, who's to blame? I don't know. Many different people. The acting is terrible. Bringing back all of these legacy characters and just absolutely butchering their characters. I mean, there's so much wrong with it. I understand. Dialogue. So many things. So many issues. I hate the ending sequence where they're clearly on a stage and Michael's like slashing and killing them. And it's like this black background. And you hear behind the scenes, David Gordon Green talking about how they couldn't shoot on location because the sun was coming up. But it works. It doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. You can tell they're on a stage. I hate it. But. As I said, it looks beautiful. Michael Myers coming out of this burning building with like the water coming down from the hoses and the firefighter. I mean, it just looks so freaking cool. And for me, I love it. I'll eat it up. As a sequel going in, as I mentioned, when I watched it, I was very disappointed. But now, talking about right now, when I want to put a film on, I enjoy the heck out of Halloween Kills for all of the reasons that I mentioned, and that's why it is so high on my list. All right, coming in at number four on the Halloween franchise ranking list is going to be actually Halloween 2, the other Rick Rosenthal directed picture in here. Now, Halloween 2, standing on its own, if we never got any other Halloween sequels, would be a very disappointing and subpar sequel to a fantastic film, however, it standing on its own is a great film. I think there's many aspects of this film that I really, really enjoy. I love, love the hospital setting here. I love a lot of the opening sequence shots. I love a lot of what Michael does here. He has his own vibe. I don't feel like when I watch Halloween 1 and 2 back to back and people will say that's the best way to watch it. I feel like that's the worst way to watch it in my opinion because you watch what is a masterpiece and go right into Michael Myers popping up with a tiny little knife behind or whatever from behind a chair popping out of nowhere or killing people with needles and you know little tiny surgery knives and stuff. I, it just doesn't hold a candle to the original. It doesn't feel the same to me. But when I go in and I want to see a horror in a hospital setting, especially late at night with a, a limited staff. I love it. I love the trick or treat sequences. I love some of the kills in here in terms of their own style to them. I love a lot of the characters in here also, even though they're kind of annoying. I kind of like Laurie Strode half drugged out running through the hospital in the middle of the night. Yeah, she doesn't do much, but I kind of like it. There's so much to be enjoyed about Halloween H20. Again, the setting, I love the, the uh, Haddonfield Memorial Hospital setting. I love even the, the tiny little bit about the little kid coming in with the razor blade in his mouth. There's little details that make it feel like it's trick-or-treating, Halloween, fall, continuation of the same night. It makes it feel like it's a later version of the nighttime. You want to see not night shift at a hotel on Halloween, or, hotel at a hospital on Halloween night again so much to enjoy but when you look at it as a sequel to the original it just the mask being stretched out from Dick Warlock's face being bigger the performance from Michael Myers not necessarily bad but it's just not the same as Nick Castle in the original the music isn't as good it, like it, it doesn't do the same effect you know the scares don't do the same effect as i mentioned michael myers popping out of nowhere it just doesn't do the same but if you watch it in my opinion as its own thing it is a great halloween movie to put on and so that's why i like to watch it on its own separate from the original and that's when i personally enjoy it and that's why it's actually taken me years to really come along and enjoy it more because i always kind of watched it as a second piece of the first film and a lot of people as i mentioned say that's the best way to do it i just it, that in my opinion that's the worst way to do it so 
set, setting it aside from the original classic is the best way to view this in my opinion. Fact that Halloween 2 introduces the fact that Michael Myers is Laurie Strode's brother. I know a lot of people don't like that aspect. For me as a kid, I always liked that. Now I understand the reasoning behind it. It takes away some of his like anti-motivation motivation. I get it. I get the arguments for it. But as a kid, I always thought that was scary. I don't know, like it always hit me. I was like, Oh crap, that's her brother. So I don't know. For me, I liked that aspect of it. I understand all of the reasoning for why it was crammed in there. John Carpenter trying to write something and to connect them. And I understand all the arguments, as I mentioned. But with Halloween 2, it's never really bothered me. I always kind of enjoyed the fact that it was her brother. And it's this crazy story element. And it still doesn't take away his like evil presence and his like you know, lack of motivation because it still feels like he's out to kill anybody that's in his way, but now he, but he still kind of has a target. So he kind of has a target anyway, because he's still following Laurie Strode. So I don't know. It never bothered me as much as it bothered other people, but I can see why it does. All right, getting into number three on my list now. This one is probably the one I've watched maybe the most in the franchise, to be honest with you. It is Halloween H2O. I love this movie. I love Josh Hartnett in this movie. I love Laura Strode's character in this movie. As I mentioned, this movie is the reason I drink the coffee the way that I do, hold the mug the way that I do. This one is so frustrating like many of the films in this franchise because every time I watch it, I'm like, what could have been, what could have been if we got a good mask and it didn't change throughout the film and it wasn't CGI at one point, you know, what could have been? But that being said, man, I love Halloween H2O. It just does so much right. I personally like this boarding school setting, this like fall set away, Laurie Strode, de alcoholic, dealing with like her brother being this psycho killer and raising her son. I like the aspect that Josh Hartnett's character is the same age as, you know, her brother was when he came after her. I, there's so many elements here that I really enjoy. Again, it has the most like, I think, Scream-esque teen slasher, you know, written by Kevin Williamson. So, hey, that plays a big role in it. And it's got that, the most of that vibe to it. So when I'm in the mood for that type of Michael Myers, that Halloween film, Halloween H2O is the one I put on. This is the one I could probably like endlessly watch. There's just so much that this film does really well. Also, as I mentioned, I like Laurie Strode's character in here. And I love the way that it brought it back. As I said in Halloween, uh, Halloween 2, I've never minded the fact that Michael Myers was Laurie Strode's brother. So I like the way they tied things together and brought Michael back all these years later and kind of skipped four, five, and six. I personally like it. I think this is my favorite of the storylines. Honestly, if I had to pick one, I think the Halloween 1, 2, H2O, maybe ignoring Resurrection, but... I think though that's my favorite cohesive storyline in that I want to really accentuate the fact that it's cohesive. You know what I mean? I do wish the Halloween H2 was a little bloodier. I wish it didn't have so many mask issues. I wish it was didn't feel so tame in the gore and the kills aspects. But just like everyone, every movie in this franchise, as I kind of mentioned, when it lacks one thing, it makes up for it in another. And so you know, you're watching every movie for different pieces. And that's something that's so interesting about this franchise. You, know, you don't have, even like the first movie, you're not watching that for the kills so much or the gore. You're watching it for what it does so well in so many other aspects. But when you're watching this one, you're not watching it for that. You're watching it for the fun vibes, the cool Josh Hartnett performance, the teen slasher feel, you know, the setting at the boarding school. You're watching it for LL Cool J. And so it's got so many things that it does so well. It do ignore some of the other aspects. I wish those could all be together. I wish you could take the kills from Halloween kills and the story from Halloween H2O and the suspense from the first film and mesh and wash them all together and have the perfect Halloween sequel. But unfortunately, I don't think we're ever going to get that. But that being said, I absolutely adore this film. I've loved it for years. And while I have gone on years have years have gone on and I've watched it numerous times. 
Some of the flaws have stood out to me more and more and more. I still love this. I, you know, I love the fact that this is shot in the same place that Scream 3 is. There's something about that tie-in together that, while I know many people have talked about that, it just makes me almost like the film more because I, I like put those two together and they feel like Kevin Williamson teen slasher films. And I just, I love that. It's like a grasp onto that nostalgia for it. And so when this one's on TV, man, I love the opening sequence with Joseph, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. So much that I really, really enjoy about this film, despite its flaws. And that is why it comes in at number three on my list. All right, coming in at number two on my list is the 2018 film, Halloween. Yes. Now, this one to me, as I kind of had mentioned about what I like about Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends, this one has aspects of it. It also has a fantastic John Carpenter score, and that's going to always bump it up a little bit for me. But it also, this one to me feels the most like the original. It has lots of flaws in the dialogue writing, character writing. I don't like Laurie Strode as much in Halloween 2018 as I like her in Halloween H2O. I personally prefer, I think, the alcoholic Laurie Strode in Halloween H2O than I do in this one in Halloween 2018. But I think this one feels the most like a cohesive bringing back Michael Myers to a new modern generation. I do think this one actually feels the most scary. I don't know if that's a hot take, but this one, every time I watch it, it like I can feel the tension. It genuinely has tension that builds up through the fan, through the film, that ending climax with Lori in her house and Michael is just suspenseful it's genuinely intense and that like moment when Lori turns the tables on michael and you realize it's a trap every it hits for me every single time it hits i love it i love some of the kills here practical effects work from christopher nelson can we talk about the fact that i think when people talk about halloween 2018 they forget the fact that we haven't had a solid mask since the first one until the 2018 film, yeah, some of them can be good in certain aspects. You might enjoy them, but really, Halloween 2018 got the shape right again, okay? It got a great performance from James Jude Courtney, and boy, Michael Myers feels scary again for the first time in many, many years. I think he genuinely is frightening. It also got that tone of like, this evil presence in the town again. He's loose and we need to get trick-or-treaters off the street. And it just really captured that as well as some of the one takes, some of the shots in here. The, again, the lighting, the cinematography, the score, the kills. Just there's so much that this film does so well. And when I am wanting to put on a Halloween film, this is one that I want to revisit very, very often. But it also does things so well that I think it just, it has to be at number two on my list. Coming in at number one on my list is no surprise to anyone, the OG, the classic, the 1978 film, John Carpenter's Halloween. In my opinion, this is the greatest horror film of all time. It's one of my absolute favorite films. And I have talked so much, this video is so long, I feel like I'm tripping over my words. I don't know what, to say besides the fact that this film is an absolute masterpiece in my opinion it does so much so right the creation of this iconic character but in michael myers but more than a character this film does what so many films try to do and what i will always revert back to it creates a presence it creates this evil concept this idea of this just evil thing being in the town embodied by a man. This is what gave me nightmares as a child through cinematography, through music, through amazing body acting, through amazing acting from uh, an early Jamie Lee Curtis performance. It creates this fear of this thing that could be anywhere at any time during this magical holiday of Halloween when kids are out trick-or-treating and people want to have fun and the fall leaves are coming down in the suburban streets and there's just this presence. And I used to have dreams as a kid that I didn't get scared by too many things, but I would have nightmares where I'd wake up 
And I just remember dreaming that it was Halloween and I was so excited for Halloween, but I found out Michael Myers was loose in my town. He was in my town. And it's this idea that he could be anywhere at any time, no rhyme, no reason, no, I, no, you know, constraints for how he gets into a house, how he kills you, what he's going to do. He's intelligent and methodical and plotting yet at the same time, not driven by anything specific. There's no real way that you can tie him down to anything. What's he going to do? Where's he going to go? He's somehow able to drive a car. He's somehow able to track people, yet he's patient. And, and it's just there's so much that goes into the building of this concept. And I reiterate that so much that it did so much more than just create a person or a character. It created a concept of fear, this idea of fear in your town, in your safe suburban neighborhood at one of the best times of the year when you want to have fun and you want to be out with your friends, but you can't because there's this presence somewhere. And that's something that you can say whatever you want about how maybe it hasn't stood the test of time in terms of lighting or the low budget or whatever you want. But this idea has always, always stuck with me and I think will always stick with me. And it's a thing that every time I watch Halloween, as soon as I hear that musical score, that, oh, it's just magic. It just strikes fear into my heart and it just cuts me in deep into my soul. Reminds me of the first time I watched this film. And I, without rambling too much, as I know I've already rambled so much, I don't know really what else to say about Halloween, except for the fact that this is the film that is responsible for making me want to make films. And, you know, I know you probably hear a lot of filmmakers say things like that, but it's so much more than a character. It's so much more than a mask. This is the film that gave me the idea that you can move a camera, you can light something, and with that amount of just that camera movement, lighting, and music, you can create fear that will stick with someone long after they leave the theater because of the things that you did in making the film, not just writing, not just the characters, you know, those can come and go. And of course, all of that writing is what made this a classic. I'm not saying that, that you shouldn't put time into that. Obviously you should, but the craftsmanship behind the film is what made me want to make movies even the poster for halloween is one of the most iconic and best posters movie posters of all time in my opinion it is genuinely one of the best and i don't use masterpiece super often on my channel but i believe the original halloween is an absolute masterpiece of a film and that is why to no surprise it is the number one spot on my ranking so that is my ranking. Thank you so much for watching and staying tuned to the end. Happy Halloween. I hope you're having a fantastic Halloween. Please let me know what your ranking is down in the comments or go follow me on Letterboxd. I have my list on Letterboxd. You can even drop your a link to your ranking in the comments down below and let me know more than your ranking, but why your number one is your number one or your number two is your number two. What core elements stick with you? And when you're watching a film, what do you watch it for? Do you watch it for the kills, the mask, the music, the lighting, or the story? What's the most important piece that stands out to you? Thank you so much for watching again, and I hope you're having the best Halloween. Until next year, take care. Got a money scared on a big bad wolf. Oh, I never see the silver line and only see the gold. I don't speak in caps, dog, everything bold. And I put that on myself, cause it's a life that I done chose. Once it come through, you can see me on the west side.